Today's daily dose of math is about the best measure of central tendency. In the statistics course that I teach, students learn about three measures of central tendency, which are the mean, otherwise known as x-bar, the median, which can be abbreviated MD, and the mode, which is abbreviated MO. Now the mean is the average, and we all know about average before we start studying statistics. We just learn a new name for it. The median is the middle value. If you arrange all the values from smallest to largest, the very middle one is the median. And the mode is the most popular value. It's the value that appears the most often in the set of data. All of these are considered to be measures of central tendency. But what does that mean? If the data can be shown in a bell curve like this one, all three of mean, median, and mode are supposed to land in the middle, right about where this line is. The better the set of data, the more likely all three of these will land really close together. If you have a perfect set of data that makes a perfect bell curve, all three of these values are the same value. But we usually don't have perfect data. So what we like to do in statistics is choose one of the three measures of central tendency and we want to choose the one that is the most reliable. The most reliable at being in the center. We can be asked a question. Given a situation, which is the best measure of central tendency for this situation? And then we're asked to justify our answer. Students hate the part where they have to justify. But I have a method for answering this question where the justification becomes very easy. All you have to do is ask yourself two questions. Question one, is the data quantitative or qualitative? Now you have to know what these words mean, of course. Quantitative means it's numbers and qualitative means it's not. If it's qualitative, you choose mode and you're finished. You don't have to answer question two. Qualitative data can't have a mean or a median because it's not made from numbers. Therefore, mode is the only choice. And to justify our answer, why did we choose mode? We say because the data is qualitative. So the justification is simply to provide the answer to the question that we used to figure out which one we want. But if the data is quantitative, we need to go on to question two. Question two asks, is the data symmetric or asymmetric? Again, you have to know what those mean. Symmetric means the left side is a mirror image of the right side, like in this bell curve. Asymmetric means it is not a perfect mirror image. So if your bell curve is lopsided, it's asymmetric. If the data is symmetric, we choose the mean, the average, the x-bar. And that's always the one that we would most like to choose. It is considered the most reliable. But if the data is asymmetric, we do not choose the mean, we choose the median. It's more likely to actually be in the center. Therefore, it's more likely to be best measure of central tendency. Now we look at how we justify our answer if we chose mean and median. If we choose mean, we justify by saying the data is quantitative and symmetric. If we choose median, we can justify by saying the data is quantitative and asymmetric. So you can see how just giving the answer to the two questions that you had to ask when you made your choice justifies the choice. That is today's Daily Dose of Math. Please like, subscribe, and share.